Welcome uh, to this uh, new video, guys. So I literally just uh, I cracked a monster for this one because uh, this one is really, really deep and in depth. So we're going to look at the client acquisition infrastructure and systems design uh, to take a company from zero to 30K or from zero to 50K in, in and around three months, right? You can maybe do it in four or five months, but we're going to look at the metrics, the data and the math and also the volume required and the basically what is required, what systems are required, what teams are required to achieve uh, the outcome, right? So the first three things that I'm going to outline that, I've, that I have here on this, um, uh, this, this picture here is basically uh, three pillars to, to building a really strong and uh, unstoppable business in the sense of like something that will make you a lot of money and something that will make a lot of like impact in the world and it will last you a lifetime, right? So first thing we have to have strong sales skills. Now I am not going to uh, open this up very, very deep, these three points. I'm literally just going to outline them why you need them and you're going to see there's bullets uh, around them. Uh, reason for that is because this is, uh, we run a, at Telfel Systems, we run a, uh, basically a consultancy so we run a consulting firm, right? So these are some of the things that we look at when we work with companies. However, you need a strong sales skills. You need strong sales skills. You need a strong design and engineering skills, and you need marketing. And basically those skills need to intertwine and come together, right? So if you have one of these legs lacking, the whole machine by itself will not grow. It's just as simple as that, right? So. Then we also look at the long game. So I always say that my philosophy that I have is that I have to play long-term games with long-term players, right? With everything I do, okay? It, this can be health, uh, this can be, well, fitness, health, uh, you know, partner, how you select a partner, and um, basically business related, right? I always strive to, to play long-term games with long-term players because I've recently spoke to uh, one of the new clients that we onboarded and he's a massive influencer. He is basically, you know, he's going to be the biggest uh, influencer in South Africa. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. We'll have the announcement a little bit later, but he told me that he recently spent over like $5,000 and just on equipment, right? So this is basically cost of doing business, right? It is the cost to, to keep his wheel rolling, the cost to, to keep his business growing. And if we don't take that money and allocate it correctly um, into to, to levers, leverage levers that will allow us to grow the business, then we will either be working against ourselves with the finite amount of energy that we have, or we will just basically not be like aware enough to be able to take the skill and duplicate the money because Let's say you spend that $5,000 and you don't see an immediate return. Here is where a lot of people's heads get flipped because it is not about the immediate return. It is about what happens and how you allocate and deploy that money and how you put it to work, right? What happens one year, two years, three years, four years after that, that $5,000 you spent on equipment or office or whatever the thing might have been is, is basically what allows you. Now, I would say you have to spend as much money as you can, firstly on um, getting access to the right information and getting access to a uh, mentor, someone who has walked the walk, right? Who's running a multi-million dollar company in, in that perspective. So that's the only cheat code really uh, when it comes to cutting a uh, learning curve, when it comes to really trying to get onto top of things and onto speed of things. So this is where these metrics will come into play when, it, when, we, when we shift the lens again to the business side of things, right? So to the business side of things, we want to look, this is primarily marketing related, um, some KPIs that you can uh, be aware of, because uh, if you're not, this will really, really change a lot of things for you. So firstly, we're gonna look at time to value. So the TTV is a business term, okay, that describes the period of time between a request for a specific value and the initial delivery of the value requested, right? A value is for basically a desirable business goal and it can be, number one, quantifiable, tangible, or it can be intangible, abstract or intangible, right? 
So then we're going to look at the CHS, a customer health score, right? So this is a numerical value that represents the overall health of a customer. Okay. So the CHS can be used to help prioritize customers and engagement and basically intervention and track the progress of individual customers over a period of time, right? Then we're going to look at the NPS. So this is a net prompter score. So this is widely used uh, within market research metric that is based on a single survey question asking basically uh, respondents to rate the likelihood of that they would recommend, okay, a company product to uh, or a service to a friend or to a colleague. And then we're going to look at business activation. However, I will say this, uh, some of these, they do sound similar in nature. However, they drive towards the same direction and angle, obviously, sustainable growth uh, for your company. That's why you need to be able to track these, right? So this is, um, so you track them, so you can capture the data, so you can analyze the data, reiterate back on the data, and then feed it back in, have better inputs, better outputs, etc. So this is the point where customers buy your product, okay? Customer activation is the point when they receive value from the first time, okay? When they buy, specifically if you go out, you buy a new phone, you go out, you get the new iPhone, whatever, might re you might even be using the phone for other things, uh, which is a powerful machine, not just for phone calls, but anyways, as soon as you make that first phone call, kind of that's where the relationship comes in, right? So for this example, we're going to look at a ticket price from anything of like north of $3,000, a ticket price. N now, Obviously, $3,000 is leaning towards high ticket, but this is a prime example for how you do that, right? And we can do different examples when it comes to e-commerce, et cetera, a little bit later, because we've actually um, started to work with some of our clients that are in that space. And being able to break that down is actually really cool to see how those models run, right? So first things first is we have number of clients, okay? So number of clients here, we have 13. That's your granddaddy total, okay? to get to the 50K in 90 days, okay? So let's quickly look at what is needed. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to reverse engineer the thinking process. Now, I love this. I absolutely love this because I learned this from Charlie Munger. I love studying the work of Charlie Munger. I, I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to that. And number one, first principles, thinking. Um, reverse engineering, basically first principles is something that Elon Musk drives but reverse engineered processes of thinking is something that obviously uh, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's right-hand man drives, okay? So just go read up. If you don't know who that is, um, fantastic knowledge-based work. It's, it's something really to look into, right? So um, this, uh, this picture that I put up here is basically based on software engineering. If you reverse that process and how they go about things. But what we really need to focus on is um, the, the actual the metrics and the numbers and the data, right? So we need to sign four clients per month. What, now what does that look like? What does the effort there look like? So in order to sign four new clients per month, obviously you already need to have proof of concept, number one, and you need to have status delta established with inside of the market that you are serving, right? And this all adds up to product market fit. Now, 26 sales calls, okay, on a close rate, of 15%, which is a super low end metric industry standard. You're usually looking anywhere from 20 to 25% on a, on a starter close rate. And then you look at like maybe something like a 75% show up rate. But if you look at these numbers, it gives you the 34 sales calls. If you are able to generate 34 sales calls, right? And you have a 7.5% of every warm lead that becomes a meeting. Now I will say this, not all of your leads will be warm leads. So if you engage in outbound prospecting, which is something we're going to get into right now, outbound prospecting is obviously where you go out and you do door to door on the internet, right? Cold. That's what it is. Now, a few years ago, that was much easier. And right now, the big dogs are cranking the, the rules, right? They're making it much harder. So 7.5% of every warm lead becomes a meeting, right? So 453 warm leads. That is the total. If you can get 453 warm leads, this is what it looks like, okay? So you have a two to a to a 5% basically uh, conversion rate, right? Now, if you do cold app on prospecting, you need to look at anywhere from a, basically conversion rate, throw that away first, 
we need to look at our lead rate, okay? If you, you first look at the lead rate based metric of one to 3% if you're starting off fresh, if you're new, okay? So again, this does not matter if you are a barber, okay? This does not matter if you are on Tinder and you're looking to, to find the girl of your dreams. We have to get the volume right, okay? Without this efficient volume, the needle simply just won't move. If you swipe on a gazillion girls, if you just, for an example, right? If you swipe on a gazillion girls, and, and you find one or two that you actually like and they match with you, you will have a much higher chance of actually meeting someone. But however, you need to have a filtration system towards who it is that you're actually looking for. Otherwise, you'll also just be burning time. If you're a barber, for an example, and you don't own, run your own business. Now, what you have to do is this, is that number one, if you don't own your own business, you're going to go where the money is. You're going to go where the feet is, right? So then you're going to go cut for someone or you're going to go to a place where the feet is, where the customers are, where the flow of things is. So this is another way how you can build a team that can actually go out and if you want to start your own thing, you want to scale it up, you want to ramp it up. This is how you forcefully go out and you take what is yours. That's how you become a shark, okay? So 2.5 to a 5% basically uh, lead rate, which is fantastic if you can get there, right? Of every uh, prospect you DM. Now, however, I want to say this. You will not get a 5% lead rate on cold outbound. If you get a 5% lead rate on cold outbound, you are a real shark. So um, if you can get to 5% on warm leads, yes, that is something else, okay? So every prospect you DM becomes a warm lead. So for an example, you go out, the, you have to have initial touch points with people. If you have people in a Facebook group or in a community, obviously they are aware of your work. If you've been around for some time, they are aware of your work, right? If you just go out, send someone a blandly cold message, you knock on their door, what, what, what do you want? You know what I'm saying? That's way harder than having people understand who you are, what you do, etc. That's why brand awareness is so important in the growth phase, right? Um, all right, so if we move over here, we have to, if like a, on this 2.5 to 5%, right? Of every prospect you DM to become a warm lead. So that is anything uh, north of 18,000 messages, right? Per month on volume. That's mad. That's mad. If you've ever done this yourself, if you're a one man army, if you're a laptop warrior, that is mad. Okay. So volume of outreach, as I said, again, needed to sustain a profitable machine and, and bank within 90 days. Okay. So firstly, let's not worry too much about the sufficient amount of volume, because let's look at the accurate reps, right? The quality in your reps. So if we have a lead rate of 2.5%, right? And specifically what you have to look at is the amount you have set amount of days where you or your team can go out and work right now. Usually those that drills down to like 24 days. So if you divide the 18,000 with 24 working days where you work from seven to like, I don't know what time you work at. Right. So, and you can pump out 750 outreaches per day. Okay. On 2.5. Right. So now if you have a 5% lead rate and we look at the same thing, right, then it shows us that you need a 375 outreaches per day. Now, how do you dissect these outreaches? Because this is the volume required, right? So you have to have, tw again, as I've said, you have 24 working days as an example for you or your team. And basically you have to have different pools on where you go hunt. And I'm going to quickly get into them here. So you need to know where, firstly, your people congregate. There, uh, people are, we as, uh, on an evolutionary standpoint, we always like to group together when we like to, to, to go do activities with other human beings, right? Uh, that will never fall away because that's a social aspect of human beings. So again, channels. So we have Facebook, IG, Twitter, LinkedIn, email, all of these are playgrounds with different rules. Okay. You cannot go ahead and message the person the same way. For example, you message on Facebook this way, you talk to a person this way on Facebook, but on LinkedIn, it has to be completely different, more personalized, etc. because that is a different kind of a caliber person. You might be sewing, depends on if you're selling to lower end of the market or higher end of the market right? Sophistication of here is how you build networks, how you build um, relationships, right? So that's really important to understand. So let's quickly look at it, right? So you have to have two, two appointment setters, which will fulfill the SDR based role. Okay. Now, this over here is from Aaron Ross, predictable revenue, you can go read the book, fantastic book, If you've never read it, 
you should you should definitely do that this year so if there's only one book you read and you want to grow your business go read that book okay <laughs> so um you can either have you know obviously the two sdrs plus your own efforts uh to reach the 750 per day right get as close to it as you can because i promise you it's not easy so 150 on ig specifically with some emails per day so it's 100 you can you can dissect them up right 100 to 150 um, what, what's happening here is like, I told you, they are cranking, the big dogs are cranking the rules, right? So they're making it harder and harder for you to message. If you go out and you do 25 messages, uh, you, you have a very high likelihood of being cuffed and being put in Facebook jail for some time. Right. Um, and you also have to pay attention to email on LinkedIn because we use LinkedIn a lot to talk to new customers. Um, and we've recently, um, like I would, I would pull up my LinkedIn now and show you, uh, how that works, but I, I think I should do a complete separate video on that. And if it's something that you guys want me to do, I definitely can get into it, how we actually do it, how we approach, how we book meetings um, through uh, through our teams and through actually having an outbound system that works on LinkedIn. Specifically, LinkedIn is is my personal favorite to, to, to meet new business people, right? So uh, Twitter, you can do like 50 to 75 per day. Twitter is something we've been like playing around with. And um, you can have, we don't really focus too much on Twitter, but it's a great place. Twitter is actually a very good place, okay? And I've recently been able to fully wrap my head around that and, you know, break that belief to move over to Twitter. LinkedIn, I would say if you start with this whole process, you need to do at least 10 to 25 spears a day. So these could be loom-based videos where you provide as much value as you can, as much value as you can, and you, you provide that value. And with the hopes, now I don't, Hope is not a strategy here, but you have to understand you have to engage with the process in order to get yourself in front of more people. The more the more hands you shake, the more money you make. So if you can provide value and someone finds value off the video, of course, they're going to have a chat with you and want to learn more. Right. So that's the process there until you've signed your first client. So most people. Why they take so long to do this, why they take two years is because they focus on like a thousand eight hundred messages uh, a month or even like 1,800, 2,000 messages per month, which would take you like 4.5 times longer, right? Now, in this whole perspective of things is what what is needed, okay? So there's a few things that are really needed to do this. So you need volume, 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 volume. And this is one thing I've, I've narrowed down to the point where we have built a system where we are consistently able to go out and produce 500 to 700 uh, cold, I'm gonna say cold outbounds a day, okay, mixed with all of the other outbound and inbound strategies, right? So two, uh, two outreach channels, you can do a third one if you have the bandwidth, okay, but if you are cuffed on sending 25 messages on Facebook, sending 25 messages on Instagram, you have to have another way, you have to, you have to, okay, so you have to have multiple accounts, you have to, there's a, there's a way that we help all of our clients to make sure that those accounts are not looking like dummy accounts. They're actual accounts that can be of status and credibility and that can be able to be used as a account where we go in and we duplicate the process. So two SDRs, sales development or marketing development reps, okay? And you can have a VA to handle the, the lead flow or the admin base work. And you can have two outreach specialists, okay? You can have a Facebook group, a community-based group. It does not have to be on Facebook, but you can have a, a community-based group, Discord, etc., wherever it is where you can build that culture and community with inside of your thing. Then you can have a content schedule where you have to consistently pump out three to four pieces of value driven based content. And you can have the eyeball driven based content, which is the short form, which is a fantastic thing we should tap into. I say this to myself, I need to do this more myself. And I'm actually starting to, to lean more into short form because brand is built on the internet, right? Um, it's in, uh, in this time that we live in. So, and then you also want to uh, give the market what it wants, right? And then adjust your pricing accordingly. Last thing I will say on pricing here is that because if you want to charge a premium for your thing and you're like, how do I charge more money? Remember this, Louis Vuitton and the guy that surpassed um, uh, Elon Musk as becoming the richest person on the planet is that he has brand and brand is connected to status, okay? So if you stay... Uh, if you drive a really nice car, it, you might not even own that car, okay? Your status is already perceived higher than someone that does not drive that car. If you earn X amount of money, your status in the hierarchical structure of, of society is already increased. And as Steve Jobs said, if they think you are rich, they think you are right. And that's kind of sad because at the end of the day, 
you want to be able to work with someone that like gives you a a decent service. I mean, I I've recently here's a story that I can tell you from from my perspective. I have one guy that I go one that's my barber. I go to this guy. He he sorts me out, and he, as you can see, um, uh, this is a different guy though, but he sorts me out. And I've recently moved to this area where I haven't been able to find a guy that's decent. And my guy that cuts my hair is in a different town. And I'm like, I need to find someone. And so my friend introduced me to someone the other day. He sorted me out. I was like, okay, I'll go to that guy as a backup, but you cannot cheat on your barber. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, guys, so uh, that's basically um, that's basically it on a service-based perspective. Because if you have that high level of service and you charge a premium, you're able to take that money, feed it back into the business, increase your service delivery, increase the value uh, of the perceived value uh, that is obviously achieved. The higher the price, the higher the perceived value. And um, we really dive deep into this because this, these are all decision-making sciences. Decision-making sciences is broken up into a few pieces. Number one, behavioral psychology. Number two, evolutionary psychology. And number three, um, complex economics. Uh, that is something you would want to look into a little bit later. But guys, again, this has been Jean-Jacques from Self Health Systems. And if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like on this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this video. Are they getting better? Um, do you appreciate these videos? And because if you do like this video, it helps me to be able to continue doing these videos and get them in front of more people that need this help. So guys, as always, go out into this world and do something great for somebody today. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.